The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance and for the forgiveness of sins. The people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, you are my son, my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to look around. Do a 360. Our worship space. Our faith is full of rich and meaningful symbolism. As you gaze around the worship space, there's no right or wrong answer to this, but just the first thing that jumps out at you that you think is meaningful and symbolic, please offer what you're seeing. I would start with this section. Do you see something in our worship space that you think is, is meaningful for our liturgy and our faith? Darcy. The altar. Good answer. Very good. Thank you. You're up next. Yes. Wonderful. The principles of Catholic social teaching, very much central part with Christ and the crucifix of what this parish is all about. Thank you. Okay. Yes. The people. You'll ever you'll notice a good shepherd. We bow. We bow to the altar and to the crucifix. We turn and bow to you, recognizing the presence of Christ in the people. That's one of the reasons why we're configured this way. Thank you. And we ask you bow to us in return. We're on an even plane with God in, in all of us. Okay, you're up. Something that... Baptismal font. What a perfect bridge. Thank you. Did any of you by chance think of this? This entryway, this passage, this doorway. Did you ever notice at Good Shepherd, as happened last night at the 4.30 Mass, and will happen again at the 11, we ask the families and the children to be baptized, usually children, infants, to be outside the doorway. Children, parents, and godparents. Why do you think we do that? We want to emphasize the fact that the child is going to be entering into baptism in the font placed at the entryway, and the child is going to be entering into a community that's going to support and nourish and teach that child. Similarly, with the parents and godparents, though they've been here before, we want to symbolically have them enter now to the community gathered that is to support them in raising that child in the faith. So the entryway, this passageway, is a very rich symbol for our faith. And connected with that, when we renovated in 1989, it was recommended then and still is that any new Catholic church or renovated parish place the baptismal font close to the main entryway because 
we are reminded by the font of our own baptism, as Father Richard mentioned in the introductory rite. We are encouraged here and at our south entrance as a smaller font, we're encouraged to take the holy water and bless ourselves, reminding ourselves of our own baptism. So what rich symbolism we have in the passage and entryway and in the font being placed where it is. How important is baptism in our faith? Well, it's a sacrament, one of seven, so that alone makes it important. Why? Because we believe, without reciting the Baltimore Catechism version of what a sacrament is, we believe God, the Spirit, God, and Christ are present in that sacrament. And baptism is required for five of the other six. The anointing of the sick, you would not have to be baptized to receive that sacrament. But the other sacraments, we do require that you be baptized. So though no one sacrament is better or worse or more powerful or less than another, baptism is one that is an, an entry, an initiation to the faith itself. Further evidence of how important this sacrament is, is what we heard today in the gospel. What a powerful image that we hear from John. And I'll repeat it, and I want you to try and see it in your mind right here. The heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended like a dove. And a voice came saying, you are my beloved child. With you, I am well pleased. Do you believe that? Yes. Thank you, Father. Do you believe that? Do you believe that last night at 4.30 and at 11 o'clock Mass, that right here, the identical thing happened as when Christ was baptized? The heavens are open, and the Holy Spirit comes down, and God is well pleased in what has taken place here. Wow! Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that magnificent? That is a core belief of our faith. During the rite of baptism, there are two things that I want to lift up with you today. You probably will remember them, having been here or at another Catholic and most Christian churches. The rite is very similar. The sacrament is the same. Most other denominations, the mainstream denominations, believe that, that that action here, that presence of God here, is sacramental. There are two things that happen I want to lift up. At early in the rite, we invite the family to enter, to come into the community, to, to come in the presence of the font, to come in front, and we ask the parents and the godparents, do you fully understand what you are undertaking? And we ask them that immediately after we say, you have chosen to have your child baptized into the faith, and in doing so are accepting the responsibility to raise them by teaching them the commandments as Christ taught us. And that is to love God and love neighbor. Catholic social teaching, that's how we love neighbor. That's a powerful moment, and I fear, and I would put myself in that place when I was a parent with young children, I don't know that I really did understand right then. Do you understand right now what you're undertaking in this sacrament, as an example? Do you really enter into that? And later in the sacrament, we hear this very powerful statement. We hear that the child when being anointed with the oil of chrism, is being anointed priest, prophet, and king. Okay? Another, wow! Every one of us, male or female, that, that is gender neutral. It was written in a time and a culture when things were written in a masculine sense. But what 
you are being anointed with is the, the baptismal discipline to go out now, that entryway becomes an entry back into where we, we do our discipleship by being a priest, by being a prophet, and by being a king. Let's start with king. You're special. You're royal. God is well pleased in you having been baptized. Prophet, you have to be willing as a disciple to speak God's word even when those who you're speaking it to don't want to hear it. That's hard stuff. And priest, perhaps not ordained, but to do those things that priests do, to shepherd the flock, to care for all. Christ, through baptism, went through a passage. In Luke, the baptism of Christ is at the end of chapter 3, and in chapter 4, having now been baptized, having been filled with the Holy Spirit, and having been affirmed by his Father, he now has the strength to go into the desert and face temptation and overcome it. And then he goes into the temple, and he stands up, and he proclaims from the prophet Isaiah the good news for the oppressed, the captives, the prisoners, the blind. Many liken that to a presidential inaugural. He is giving his inaugural address, and it was prophetic because he, he said that this good news was for everybody, not just the Jews. So if you go back to the passage, you'll find that they went from being awed by the words that came from his mouth to wanting to kill him because he wanted to share this good news with everybody. My sisters and brothers, today we're being asked to remember our baptisms and to be recommitted to say, I do understand, and to be recommitted to this magnificent but very heavy responsibility we're given as priest, prophet, and king. And there in those waters is where the, our eternal life began because when we emerged from those waters symbolically, even if we had water poured on our forehead, the symbolism is entry into the water to die to self, rising to new life in Christ. So that's where the eternal life began, the life in Christ began that continues, the journey continues. At a funeral at Good Shepherd, as with most Catholic churches, we place the remains here by the baptismal font because we want to be reminded of this person's baptism and their entry into eternal life, which continues, doesn't end. So that as they come by the waters again and go by them on their way to their final resting place, the journey to eternal life is continuing. So sisters and brothers, I leave you with this thought. I hope it makes you smile. I hope it makes you be filled with joy, even when we think of friends like dear Alice, that nothing but good has happened. I want you to hear this and internalize it. Think about it. And consider coming to a funeral at Good Shepherd if you haven't been to one. I think you'll find it very uplifting. And so I say to you from St. Paul, are you not aware that if you have been baptized into Christ Jesus, you have been baptized into his death? Therefore, if we have been united with him in a death like his, surely we will be united with him in a resurrection like his. Wow! Do you get that? Yeah. All right. Are you ready to enter into that baptismal commitment? Yeah. When you go through the doorway today, don't consider it an, an exit, but an entrance, a passage into bringing our baptismal promises out into the world. Can I get an amen? Amen. Yeah.